Hello and welcome to Erupt, the home for how businesses can scale and transform. Throughout this podcast, we aim to inspire and educate to help you and your business thrive. Across the course of our episodes, we'll be interviewing industry leaders to uncover some of the challenges across the world of work. We aim to give an insight into some of the fastest growing organisations across HR and technology. Please follow us on our journey to erupt and elevate your business. This episode is from our Erupt Learning and Talent Conference, which was hosted in September 2022. The conference focused on topics from developing emotional intelligence to creating a transparent future career. This panel session was around winning women is the future optimistic. Our panel included Nadia Hutchinson, who is Global Director, HR Services and Operation at Cabot Corporation, Farhana Kudus, who is the Global Head of Diversity, Equality and Inclusion at 10X Banking, and Bine Agar Johansson, who is the Managing Director of Jellyfish. Our panellists discuss how they've got into the position that they're in today, and whether female allyship promotes leadership roles for women. I hope you enjoy, and make sure you check out the Go Erupt website for further content and for all videos on demand. So very nice to meet you all, um, and thanks very much for the invitation for today's panel. So I've been in um, the digital business, you can say, for many years, I think coming up to 17 years now, and uh, about 14 of those I've been working within leadership, um, both working across agency side, uh, publisher side, I've been in quite many global companies, and the last almost four years now I've been with Jellyfish, um, originally based out of the UK, and I was asked to to build out the Nordics just uh, over three years ago. So I'm normally based in Copenhagen in Denmark, um, in Sweden today, actually, traveling the world. Um, so, um, but yeah, very nice to be here today. Fantastic. Farina? I am Farhana Kudos. I um, uh, lead up uh, diversity and inclusion strategies globally. I started my career in business transformation, so driving change for organizations, uh, whether that was in the data world, regulatory world, et cetera. I've exposed myself to, to a number of those. Um, I class myself as a diversity inclusion leader, and this conversation is very thematic because uh, part of my role has, has also been about how do we create a world of equity and absolutely uh, women come into that. So looking forward to the discussion. Thank you. Fantastic. And I can see um, Nadia's joined, but I think there may be an issue with your... The Wi-Fi, Nadia, but um, but we'll we'll let you introduce yourself literally as soon as we as soon as we can see you. Um, but we'll kick off the session, uh, and I'll come back to you, Bina, with the first question. Um, and this is a, a a very good question. I'm sure you've got loads of of stories of how this has happened. But how have you been supported um, in your career? Um, I think if I look back at my career um, and the support that I've been given, I think for me. It's been a lot about having a key focus on um, the culture and the leadership within the company that I was to engage with. Um, of course, also about the role in itself, but if, if the right culture and the right sort of set of values does not exist, and especially your closest leader um, is not somebody that you in some way can mirror yourself in, I don't think that you're going to have the same success as, as if um, you can sort of check all those things off. So for me, it's been a quite um, uh, deliberate choice in terms of um, which companies that both wanted to work with me, but also the other way around, I wanted to work with them. And it has been, for me, it's been very much around um, the culture and sort of their view on people. Um, and this is also why I'm part of Jellyfish today, really, um, because that is, just, that is really the centre of, of, of our business strategy. Mm-hmm. And what about yourself, Farhana? I think for me, um, I've been lucky enough to have a good set of people around me. Um, so that's where I start. And that set of people have been a mixed group. So male, female, people starting their careers, people that are experienced, may have experienced a number of hurdles along the way. So a real mixed uh, group of people. And I've been in, in, in environments where opportunities that either existed or ones that I've been able to create myself. And I think that's really important because opportunities need to exist for us to grow. And I, I mean women as well as others. We need to be able to move forward. And if those opportunities don't exist, then we're kind of stuck really. So I've built those relationships with that 
group of fantastic people around me. I demonstrated through my ability and then it made people want to give those opportunities as they came, right? So I'd say opportunities and the network around you. Fantastic. And I mean, despite, I guess, the, 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 the steps that have been taken over the years, um, what are your annoyances um, and, 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 and things that we should still be talking about that need to essentially be addressed? Um, and we'll, st we'll stick with you, Farhana. <laughs> So I think that the first thing that uh, comes to mind for me is uh, no one person is the same. Mm. Uh, if we look at across groups, teams, people still look, look towards those groups and say, actually, one, one, one answer fits everyone. One answer will, will, will save the world and change the world. It doesn't. What I'd love organisations to still think about is um, recognise that characteristics of each person is different. Some will be the same. But actually, what does that then mean? And if you think about that question uh, and you apply that across everything, i.e. equitable benefits over just normal benefits, if you look at inclusive recruitment over just in recruitment, and then if you look at um, enable of all women, I think asking that question about actually how are individuals different, what do they bring to the table, I think allows us to drive that board. Mm. What's your take on that, Bina? Um, I, th I think I'm still surprised today by how um, some women sometimes are, are limiting themselves, you can say, in terms of not being either maybe um, afraid, um, in certain in terms of expressing more. Um, and I think really a lot of this is also down to, again, the leadership and the culture that surrounds them. I think we as, as leaders and sort of um, global leadership of the company are accountable for, for making sure to sort of create that that base of where the individual feels secure and when where being sort of your authentic self is is actually seen as truly valuable because I think it's being creating that trust and being that authentic self also being able to say I made a mistake is actually what also builds people up um, even more. Mm. So I, I think that is really um, key for change. And then, Bida, I think if you couple that with people being hungry, women being their own allies, right? So often we look at others around us to be allies for us, which we absolutely need. But I think there's also something that I'm, I'm seeing and feeling is that we need women to be uh, their own allies. So there's a view of, let's get us, please give me a seat at the table. But actually don't be my voice in every single case let me be my own voice and so what we need to see women is is actually be their own voice be brave enough to also use that senior buy that you talked about to say i want it i'm going to take it mm. fantastic nadia just checking in to see if we i am here oh I yes i can here. hear you <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I would be really keen to just, and apologies that um, it seems dark where I am. I think I have a, a very bad internet right. connection. But just to, to add on to what's been said already, is it's really important for those of us who work with women, have women in our teams, are working with, with women at various different levels across an organisation. I'm trying to make a point about understanding the cultural frame of reference for different women. So... Women in the Western world may have one cultural frame of reference. Women in Africa may have a different cultural frame of reference. Uh, and when you work with um, a variety of different people, just bear that in mind. I think that's also a very important point. Fantastic, fantastic. And I, I, has anyone else got anything to add to that? No, I, I would just agree, Nadja. I mean, um, a jellyfish weather group called She Unit, where we're basically trying to, um, it's this group of females across um, the globe, across the different um, regions, where we're trying to share career progression. And it's definitely quite obvious that there's a big difference whether you're in, yeah, based on which region you're in, basically, in terms of what is your background and, you know, sort of the culture surrounding you. So absolutely um, agree on that point. Yeah, same as in, in 10x banking. Um, I'm leading a global diversity inclusion strategy um, and it's clear that one strategy doesn't work for all regions, all cultural um, backgrounds, uh, traits and characteristics and so in order for that strategy to be successful we've needed to understand uh, what each region means 
Um, the culture in Australia is very different to the UK. Uh, the the language in in South Asia, and the, and the mannerisms very different to the UK. And it's about understanding um, cultural um, background, but also the characteristics and traits that help us become who we are. And that talks to how we speak to each other, how we engage with each other, and so forth. Perfect. And, and coming back to you, uh, Nadia, um, have you seen positive actions and impactful initiatives making a difference uh, in organisations to bring more balance? Um, many of us are either part of or, or have a mentor or a part of a mentoring network or a, a group. Um, I think that has been, for me, throughout my career, the most impactful um, journey uh, and support. The other thing is a lot of organisations are now implementing um, diverse recruitment practices, which clearly highlight that women have to be included as candidates, women have to be included on interview panels or as part of the interview process. And I think this has, for me, certainly in, in my part of my profession, has made a huge difference. Has, there, has anyone got anything to, to add to that? Yeah. So, oh, sorry, you go ahead. <laughs> yes, I'll just add to exactly what Nadia talked about there. So at 10X, we've, we've looked at driving more inclusivity right across the business. And for us, that has to start at uh, our front door which is about how, how do we attract talent? How do we signpost ourselves to talk about um, we are the company that welcome everyone um, and we are the company that once you're here, you just want to stay here because we've created that inclusive environment. And so we've looked at, at overhauling our job descriptions. In the old world, you know, you had things in there where people would say, I need a degree, degree candidate, one that is, has two, one, right? Um, but when you really uh, zoom in in that, you ask yourselves, do I really need a degree candidate? Or actually, are there other ways that comes through in, in great talent? So job description is one of those. Another example that I'll give you that we've done that has really helped is looked at the way that we bring talent in, we assess them and we uh, interview. We've introduced something called the objective assessment framework, We looks to remove biases from um, the process. And those biases might be unconscious, unconscious, we just don't know. And so by introducing frameworks like that, we've been able to um, completely look at the way we attract talent, we assess them, and actually remove some of the, the biases that might exist. And, and that example go, goes right through our employee life cycle. Um, and, uh, and the outcome of that has been, we've been able to see more of a diverse talent coming to us to say, I'm interested in a role. We've also been able to turn that around and say, actually, we've got a more of a diverse um, talent in our business. So we are seeing more women come into our business as a result of those actions. We are seeing more intersectional women. So Asian women, black women, disabled women, we're seeing a lot of those intersectional um, traits coming through as a result of those actions. Yeah, if I add to that, so just about a year ago um, at Jellyfish, we removed the traditional line manager uh, employee relationship and instead we created what we call uh, personal networks. So basically what that means is that you're surrounded by a group of people that are there for you to succeed, um, to supposed to help help you grow even further in the organization and sort of help you build out that um, personal development plan. Um, attached to this, we also created a business case process when we look at salary increases or a title change which um, is basically a, a process where um, the employer has the opportunity to put forward a business case twice per year and where the business case itself has to describe three overachievements. Mm -hmm. but the whole business case is anonymized. So you don't know who it is, you don't know what gender it is, you don't know what region they're in, there's, there's sort of it's full anonymized. And then the business case is presented um, to a global panel of that are part of the, the leadership across the globe. If you know who the, if you can recognize who the business case is, you have to step away from the business case. And the business case itself is all led by data. Um, so it's all about trying to remove um, gender as one, one aspect of this, but really trying to promote people and give salary increases 
um, based on on the actual work that you do. And the data is available for the entire organization so everybody can see the data and pull the same data. Um, and right now, I mean, we've done this for a year and a half now, 80% um, in average of the business cases are approved and 55% of those are women. So we're seeing this uh, that this has had definitely a, a positive effect in terms of, I mean, going back to your point earlier around, you know, we need to put ourselves in the driving seat as well. You know, being more motivating to, to sort of um, push yourself forward and, and try to, to obtain the goals that, that we would like to do. Yeah, and I think data plays, plays a crucial role in that. Um, data isn't, isn't the, the full answer, let's just be clear on that, but data absolutely helps. And, and if I just extend on what Bina talked about there, we've created that data platform. So we understand who we've got in our organization. What does a proportion of females, males look like and the other intersectional traits? Uh, that's been hard because what we are relying on is individuals like myself and, and others on this call to actually trust to share that data, right? But what's that's been a, allowed us to do is not to just drive change and, and use data to back up our use cases, but also actually go back and say, has what we've set out to do actually worked? How has that moved the dial? If it hasn't, that's absolutely fine. Data is guiding us. But if it has worked, then we go again and keep doing what we're doing. So data, I think, is a key to us being able to measure ourselves and keep going. Fantastic. Um, that platform where we're trying to be equal, right? Where everybody has access to the same. So as you say, it's not the only thing, but it's definitely a big part of a tool you can use. Okay, and, and sticking with you, Bina, um, how can organizations help to facilitate the transition from mid-level management to execs for women? I think, again, um, back to leadership and culture, but I think it's about seeing the talent. I think it's about focusing a lot more on um, the personal development plan so that these don't become something that we never do, so that these don't become something that never exists, that never moves forward, but that we actually take accountability, again, as an organisation and the people that surround you to, to push these forward. Um, and then I think another important element is also to focus on the superpowers and not what we're not good at. Unless this is business critical, it really does not matter. You will motivate an employer much more by focusing on their talent, their superpowers, and sort of looking at how can we involve that more into the organization than maybe focusing on something that doesn't really, in sort of in the holistic picture, mean that much, which I think sometimes at least personal development plans can. When really, if we focus on what we're good at, which also motivates us more, you will see an employer that, that grows much faster. Okay. I'm sure, I'm sure you, you, you all have something to add to that. Nadia, what are your thoughts? So I, I love the theme of um, the personal development planning. And one of the things that I think is really important is that we don't um, take that and only allow that employee to develop in areas that we, the employer, want them to develop in. We've really got to take a step back and say, what's your opinion? What's your career trajectory as you think it is today? And how can we help you get there? And that that's quite a brave move for some employers when the employee wants to go left and you want them to go right. Um, but the overall objective is to have an engaged employee who, who's, um, you know, can move throughout the organization in different ways and opening the line of communication to let the employee openly tell you what their aspirations would be so that you can support them effectively in that, in that um, professional development journey. Perfect. Bahana, have you got something to add to that maybe? Yeah, I think, I think um, I'm going to go back to one of the things I talked about earlier. Um, we as a leadership group, group need to be, be true to our word. So often we say that we want our people to grow. We want them to have opportunities and we want them to go and create those opportunities. Um, so we need to put action behind our words. So that's the first thing I'd say, because often um, words can be very performative. And so as leaders, we have a duty of responsibility to care for the growth of our individuals everyone not just women but women as well because we know um, that there is a level playing field to create 
but we need to put actions behind our words we need to take enough passion into that to make that happen and see how we can support our individuals the second one i think for me is is something i'm going to call succession planning and what i mean by that is um you know there are sometimes in organizations depending on the size you are very few opportunities come up and often the blocker is there is no opportunities so you can progress nowhere and the only option for that individual to progress is then outside organization which again is absolutely fine but if you've worked hard on bringing talent in you want to work hard at keeping them right and so for me succession planning talks about i'll give you an example if you've got a a, a chief marketing um officer role at the uh exco level or if you've got a chief operating officer role then why not create um deputy ceo or create um what they call a proxy uh, chief marketing officer and then work with that individual as, as being known and Nadia said is create those development plans to understand actually is this a role they want what skills do they have already to actually work towards that and what's the gap as employees we help them get there so yeah second one for me will be succession planning and, and almost creating proxy proxy um, roles where they can enter into those exco roles just to add to that, I think another important element is also that we sometimes tend to focus a lot on the title as opposed to the task, right? So even though there might be, um, you might be at a career stage in your organisation where, you know, there's not really an opportunity to get what you say, an increased title, there might be other projects or opportunities across your organisation where you can really add value, um, whether it's a more cultural aspect, whether it's a business um, focus, sort of again going back to what is it that drives you what is it that makes you you know get up in the morning and go to work and really be yes let's do this if you can use some of those sort of motivation skills and superpowers into sort of um as also part of your personal development plan nevertheless it doesn't necessarily always have to be title um change nice. and st sticking sticking with you again Bina then um what can men and women uh, do better to accelerate the role of women? And I think you touched on it briefly already, but if we could just get, get a bit more detail on, on, on your thoughts on that from everybody, actually, but starting with you, Bina. I mean, again, I, I think um, it's about being more aware of, of the superpowers that we all have and, and how we put them into play. Um, and I think it's also about thinking less about how many uh, what badges you have on your shoulders or how many stars you have on your shoulders and think more about as a, as a team and, and the contribution that you can make to that team. Um, I know that can be difficult for, for some, but I really think that if we think in a team, this will lift us both individually and as a team um, moving forward. Nadia, what do you think about, about, about that? For me, it's actually about um, looking around you in the room. So rather bizarrely, I've, I've um, moved into an organization where I have one, t I have two, t I sit on two teams. I lead a team, I lead a global team, and I'm part of a, an HR leadership team, both of which only have one man on them. And actually, that means that, that there's a there's a kind of disparity in terms of the diversity of thought. So when I say look around the room, literally, physically look at what you see in the, on the screen, what you see in the room with you, and really think about does that view represent a number of different constituents? If it does, brilliant but I, I, I hazard to say that most of us don't sit in rooms where we see uh, you know, a, a full and complete picture. Um, to, to help us all, I think we need to take a, take a look at who is sitting at the table in the conversation that we're having. Can be a mixture of men, can be a mixture of women, but again, for me, it goes back to that diversity of experience that has to be represented at all levels and in all discussions. I think it's also um, taking that forward and saying, let's help people understand the power of that, right? Of having that diversity of thought, even diversity of traits, if you like, in that room. Because I think the reason why we're probably still not seeing some of that come through is people's, people haven't realized 
the gold that comes as a result of that. Um, and, and it's fact, right? For anyone that doesn't know, it's fact that when you diversify the people, the four, the traits that you have in the room, you get to better outcomes. So I, th I think for me, it's also about helping people to understand what, what good comes from that. Um, for me, uh, Magnus, it's about um, what I said, something I said earlier, be your own advocate. So we've, we've, we've hopefully talked and heard a lot about allies around us. And the allyship is on the concept of someone else being my ally, being my fan, being my voice, helping me get that seat. But I want us to start what we've got, what allyship means, is then to start reimagining that and reimagining in a sense that I have to start with me first. I need to be my own advocate for someone else to be my ally. And so I'd love for us to reimagine what allyship looks like so that, let's be clear, no one's doing me a favour by giving me a seat at the table, right? I need to do myself a favour and get that at that seat so mr or mrs or, or, or non-binary ally please help me get that seat at the table and then i should be my own advocate fantastic fantastic um okay and, and sticking with allyship um does allyship connote action or is it just about self-enhancing labels and as a man should you be using your power for good in actionable ways is that is that a rhetorical question, Magnus? Slightly. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. I mean, not just as a man or a woman, just as a human. Mm. We should all be, you know, um, here to help and, and recognise the good, the strengths um, that we can bring out in, in our colleagues and, and people that we are around. I, I totally agree, Nadia. Um, I think that many years ago, it used to be like a competitive world. But going off what Nadia said there, we're all equal. We should have the same opportunities, um, same um, you know, outcomes. And in order to get there, we need to be seen in the same way. And so how do you create that level playing field? And, and how does do allies how do we support each other so you know we are each other's ally it's not just about the underrepresented groups like women but i think we need to take that level of competition mindset that used to exist i hope many years ago to now come forward and say actually we're in it together so how do we together move forward and an allyship does come in and unfortunately um we need women to be their own allies we need men to be women's allies but um, exactly what Nadia said there, we just need to take that competitiveness away and uh, have that mentality of one team, one goal. Just to add to that, I totally agree. Just, I mean, don't be afraid of it not all being about you. I mean, um, I, I think being quite many years in the industry now, I've seen this so many times that, you know, people that focus on the team, people that focus on sort of lifting um, the culture and the business in itself, they have much higher success than people just focusing on themselves um, and sort of winning the game. It always hits them like a boomerang. And it also creates sort of when you go, if you move from one job to another, you know, that effort of wanting the best for the team or wanting the best for the company follows you. Um, the, the world is really not that big, uh, especially if you move within the same industry, whether or not it's a region or globally. Um, yeah, I, I truly do think don't be so much afraid of, about, you know, stepping away of only personal success because with team success also comes personal success. Yeah, and, and also I think, you know, we've talked a little bit about allyship. We all need allies, right? And often when we look at an individual trying to be an ally, there are some individuals that can do that, understand what ally is and can, can execute on that. But there is another group where they really want to support, they really want to advocate for someone, but they just don't know how. And my guidance to them is ask. Ask individuals, how can I help you? I've got this privilege, I've got this um, uh, role, I've got this authority, and I want to put that to good use. And I want to see you succeed. And just ask the individual individuals, how can you help them be guided on that journey? I think there's also the, um, the point around allyship 
allyship is one piece sponsorship is the other piece mm. so you know ally i stand beside you sponsor i stand for you i will introduce you um i will put your name in spaces that you hadn't thought your name should be in um sponsorship for me is the real prize because it means that not only am i you're inadvertently an ally if you are also a sponsor fantastic fantastic some unbelievable insight from the three of you there um again some really good engagement in the in the chats as well um conscious of time unfortunately i wish we could talk for a bit longer but um if i could ask you all just for 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 a, a nugget that you want to leave those that are listening with um 20 30 seconds max um, and we'll start with you farhana for me go and get those opportunities they always exist look for your allies they exist as well it might be hard to find them but just find that one person and then be your own advocate perfect thank you Ina? to that um be you be authentic i think i think really there's only one of you in the world so so bring that forward that is your superpower to be yourself um and i think that authenticity will take you a very long way fantastic and last but by no means least nadia um network so network within your organization but probably the more powerful network is the network that you build outside of your organization within your friend group within your you know your trade within your industry find other people to just organically connect with and sustain those relationships because it's those relationships that will be the stronger and more powerful ones in the long run perfect Fantastic, guys. That unfortunately does bring us to the end of the session. Um, but no, re re really enjoyed the discussion. I hope you did too. Some fantastic insight. And thank you for taking the time out of your extremely busy schedules, I imagine, um, to, to, to kind of give us some of your insight and knowledge and talk about some of your experiences. Really appreciate it. This podcast was brought to you by Erupt to Annapurna, the number one platform that case studies the organisations that not only disrupt, but those that erupt. Please visit our new Go Erupt website for more content and log in to watch the full episodes from the conference. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure to watch out for the next.